<laughs> All right, guys. Okay, we are live. Oh my goodness. I'm with Dr. Leslie Cuevas and I'm so excited. We're at Nashville Restorative Dentistry and Dr. Jones is in here tonight. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. We are talking fibromyalgia, arthritis, chronic fatigue, autoimmune disease, Absolutely. pain, pain, pain. And if you're not here tonight, you are going to miss out because we are getting ready to have the greatest education. I am thrilled to death to have Dr. Cuevas here. You know, when a doctor reaches out to you, reaches out to a nurse practitioner for darn sure on Instagram, I got a message from her on Instagram says, Hey, I heard you, you know, whatever you do this, kind of medicine and stuff. I would like to meet you. You know, you need to get her in your back pocket <laughs> and bring her along wherever you go, because that's a big deal. It's very difficult to find many times doctors who believe in what we do, yeah. you know, that there is another way that we can blend it together. So, Absolutely. so tonight I'm so excited. She's going to be opening her own practice right here in a couple of weeks in Franklin. Mm -hmm. I have the phone number up here. You can share this video all night long with people and let them know, you know, about Dr. Cuevas, but she grew up in Germantown, right. am I correct? Yeah, outside of Memphis. Outside of Memphis, grew up in Germantown, and then went to, to med went to school at the University of Iowa? Yeah. What in the world? I know. Iowa. Right? Who, Are you from Iowa? I'm an Iowanian. Really? Where are from? Um, Anna was about 30 miles east of Cedar Rapids. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then, no, no, no. Here's the coolest thing. And then she went to med school and all that, Tennessee and Vanderbilt, and did all the great things and became a rheumatologist. Thank goodness. But here's the cool thing about her. She went to seminary. So I love that. And she studied soul care. Whoa. How many doctors need to study soul care? All of us all need of us, to study. Yeah, not right? all of us. I mean, <laughs> not just doc all of us need to study Absolutely. soul care. What a that's like a really cool tidbit about you, yeah. Right? She's a, she's a single mama and got her daughter here who is like going to be the greatest thing on Broadway. And I'm so excited, I've seen her <laughs> sing, I'm all excited. So, we're going to talk. Let's get, get busy. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you for being here. Thank you for taking time on a Friday night to be here. No, it's and, my in fact, thank you to every single one of you because it's Friday night in Nashville, Music City, <laughs> Tennessee, and here you are sitting learning about rheumatology. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And those of you you're watching, talking, you're too. talking like that's not as cool as being downtown on Broadway. Well, I mean, no, <laughs> right. I, I'm floored every Friday night when people show up in here. It's like, what are you people doing? Driving like two hours away to come. It's know, fascinating. That's awesome. that's awesome. So it's a good community. Yeah. Welcome yeah, to the community. And I'm so excited for you stepping out of the box. Awesome. Tell you're us, right. tell yeah. us what you're doing. Well, so a lot of people, first thing they, what, what's a rheumatologist, you know? Um, and I, a lot of times it's easy to say I'm an arthritis doctor because a lot of people come that have arthritis, but really what's different about a rheumatologist is we're good at inflammation and we've already talked about it being the, the white devil. Yes, it is the white devil. <laughs> but, Don't you know, send me a nasty email, please. Most, um, <laughs> send them to her, not to yeah. me. <laughs> That's Danny. My email, so, ah, my email so my email went down. It's down. Uh, no, but I, I deal with a lot of inflammation um, and autoimmune diseases and, and things. But there's a lot of things I take care of that aren't related to inflammation, things like osteoarthritis or fibromyalgia or conditions of that nature. Um, what I really in, enjoy doing is basically hearing people's stories. Mm -hmm. um, as a rheumatologist, uh, a lot of times I'll tell my patients, sometimes I feel like I'm on an episode of Law and Order. And I'm putting together this case for a disease and I'm using all this circumstantial evidence. You know, how long are you stiff? How many joints swell? What do your lab tests look like? What do your x-rays look like? And I put it all together and I try to say, okay, I think I've proven that you have lupus or I think I've proven that you have rheumatoid arthritis or I think I've proven that you have fibromyalgia. And then we put it together. And sometimes that's real easy. Sometimes we do it the first visit and obviously this is what's going on. But you know, sometimes it takes several visits. It takes time, even years for something to really manifest itself. So, so we're dealing with chronic illness. I'm dealing with the same patients over and over again, which is what I really enjoy doing, which is fun. Um, being with a group of people with Hashimoto's, number one, I know them with very well educated people, which is great. Um, but you know, I see a lot of that in my clinic for a couple of different reasons. One is that most of you probably know that when you're diagnosed with one autoimmune condition, mm. you're more likely to have another. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people come to see me because they already know they have Hashimoto's, but now they're concerned, could I have something like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or Sjogren's or scleroderma, 
things of that nature. So they come to me for evaluation. Sometimes I find people's Hashimoto's because they've been found to have a positive ANA. Maybe they went to their doctor and said, I feel really tired. You know, you mentioned that, like, I feel so tired. And they'll check an ANA and they'll say, oh, you probably have lupus. And then they send them to me and I'll look and I'll find their thyroid antibodies and I'll say, mm -hmm. no, this isn't lupus. This is probably Hashimoto's. And so then they can get the appropriate care for that. Um, and a lot of times what I also find with my Hashimoto's patients is that they're having a lot of pain. We've mentioned mm -hmm. that already today. You know, and that pain is kind of that monster that we, everybody knows something about, but it is so big that we don't quite know what to do about it or even how to sometimes em embrace it. Um, up to 62% of people with Hashimoto's can have fibromyalgia. Wow. So what is fibromyalgia? You know, fibromyalgia is a pain processing condition, meaning brain pain. You know, a lot of people back in the old days, 20 years ago or so, that had fibromyalgia, they were told by doctors, it's all in your head. No, I don't, I think it's maybe 20 years ago, but still people are yeah. telling, still doctors are telling that, because I have patients tell me, am I right? Yeah. 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 There's yeah. no such thing as fibro. Yeah. Even though we, yeah. I, I want to believe those days are dead. I'm, I, obviously, they're not. But, no. you know, I want to believe that most doctors understand that it is a real condition with a real set of diagnostic criteria and so on. But the truth is, in a way, <laughs> but they were right, it is in our head because all pain is in our head. If I kick Danny right now on the leg, it's not her leg telling her she's in pain. It's her brain telling her she's in pain because there's signals from the leg that instantaneously go up to the brain. The brain instantaneously processes that and then goes back down the leg and it says, ouch, she just kicked you, right? So with fibromyalgia and other conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, interstitial cystitis, sometimes TMJ, chronic headaches, all those kind of things, what's happening is the sensory portion of your brain, the setting is off. So it should be, let's say at this normal setting where things like light pressure should feel like light pressure. But if the setting's off, light pressure, a hug, tight clothing, things like that, can feel like pain. And it can be incapacitating pain to some patients because that setting is off. Yeah. <coughs> Has anybody here experienced things like that? Yeah, a lot of noddings and, and raised hands. And so, you know, that can be fibromyalgia and there's, there's definitely criteria for that. Or it can also be something called fibromyalgia-ness. That's sort of a new term that's thrown out there for somebody that maybe doesn't meet all the criteria for fibromyalgia, but there's obviously something with that setting that's off. Hmm. You know, maybe they get cramping in their stomach real easily. Maybe they get headaches real easily. Uh, a lot of people will say, I can't tolerate the heat. I can't tolerate loud noises, things of that nature. That's, that's a setting problem in the brain. Here's the good and the bad news about it. The good news is it can be fixed. It can be helped, you know? The bad thing is we don't have a magic pill. And if anybody tries to tell you there's a magic pill, mm -hmm. they are not being completely honest with you or honest with themselves because there just isn't. When it comes to pain, there's just no good drug. What we need is a balance of medications that are appropriate mm -hmm. and non-drug interventions. And people have already talked about some of those, dietary changes, uh, stress reduction, mm -hmm. weight loss, um, you know, things of that nature, acupuncture, chiropractor, uh, supplements. I mean, th there's so many things that can be done and it's, it's, it's going to be, it's so great when you marry those two things together. The medications are great when the right one is used for the right thing. So for instance, we need medications to help with that brain and to get that sens sensory correct. And those would be things like low dose muscle relaxants, Lyrica, gabapentin, medications like that, low-dose naltrexone, things like that can be really helpful. Um, supplements like CBD oil, turmeric, things like that. Um, opioids do not have any place for that type of pain, just doesn't help, okay? And, and that's been a real problem with people with chronic pain. They've been over-treated with the wrong type of medications and under-treated with the right type of interventions. Right. And so that's why we've gotten into this crisis.
and we are definitely in a crisis. I, I just saw on the news yesterday, I, I videoed it and I haven't shared it yet. Women 31, was it 30? Did anybody see the news story on, uh, it was NBC News, 31 to 60, it's the highest rate of overdoses on mm. opi opioids, opioids right now. Um, yeah, it's terrible. Well, 30, 31 yeah. to 60, I think The United is. States has 3% of the world's population and we use 83% of the world's opioids. Oh my goodness. Wait, say that again. 3% of the world's population uh -huh. and we use what? 83% of the world's opioids because the rest of the world understands that it doesn't work for things oh. like chronic headaches or Hashimoto's or fibromyalgia and things like that. But unfortunately, we just got to a state in this country where doctors were misinformed, patients were misinformed, and we have that culture of just give me a pill and let's fix it. And there is no pill to fix it. If there was, I'd be giving it out, you know, but there's just not. I wish, I wish it was that easy. But the, the best things in life aren't always easy, but man, they're worth it. You bet. They're worth it. Mm -hmm. And so getting that right balance of the non-drug therapies, which really should be your foundation, when it comes to chronic pain and fatigue and things, the non-drug th therapies are the foundation and then the drugs can be targeted for the other parts. Does that make sense? That's right. And you and I talked about this guys. If you all are on here tonight, put, post your questions up or hit your hearts and your likes and all those things um, as she's speaking, but put, put your questions up here and we'll answer it later. You and I were talking about that. I said, I have a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. She has rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, Hashimoto's, and now has been diagnosed with Sjogren's as well. Mm -hmm. And she, so the first, she had Hashimoto's before she had anything. Well, we knew about Hashimoto's first, but she's on, what did I say she was on? Plaquenil or Embryol? I can't remember. She's on one mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. medications and she so did not want to do it. She was on methotrexamine. I mean, she was on big mm -hmm. things, but, it, but she's on one now and I can't remember which it is, but, and she's done everything. She's doing everything else, but she's on one medication mm -hmm. and she's fine with it. You know, and I can't, she came to me, I said, girl, you know, you have to do what you have to do. Right, and right. she's found her sweet spot. Yeah. She is gluten free. Well, she, of course she is. She has celiac disease, but, um, and she's doing the things, but she's taking her medication. Absolutely. I think you can be so far to the left that you hurt yourself and you can yeah. be so far to the right that mm -hmm. you hurt yourself. Absolutely. And she's found her sweet spot. She eats well, she eats clean. She does this, she moves, but she has, she needs that. Otherwise she can't move. I right. mean, and, and she teaches piano. So she's constantly, mm. you know, like in her hands just look like mm. little sausages. Mm. Yeah, no, if you have a, an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, you know, conditions like that where you have active inflammation in a joint, it's super important to be on the right medication. And we call those DMARDs, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. Those are super important because chronic inflammation not only causes pain, stiffness, and swelling, but can actually start to road uh, into the joint and cause deformity. And once you have a deformity, right, I can, I can treat inflammation, but if you have a deformity or damage to the joint, that's forever, mm -hmm. right? So we want to have early aggressive treatment of that type of inflammation. Um, so I would never uh, recommend for a patient that has definite RA or, or definite lupus, especially organ threatening lupus, like it's affecting my lungs or my kidney or something like that. You know, we need to be on medication. That's super important. But that doesn't mean medication is the only part, right? So there are patients, for instance, that have lupus that they'll take their medicine, they're fine with that, but they don't want to put their sunblock on or they don't want to uh, yeah, you know, eat, eat the right way or work on their stress levels. You know, I'll, I'll ask them, are you doing anything to modify your stress? Oh no, sure. you just don't understand. It's just so bad. No, I do understand because life is hard. Life right? is hard. It is yes, hard. I understand lady. And, um, Yes. Yeah. Every person in this room, I'm mm -hmm. sure uh, me included has been through something and it is hard, but that's when it becomes even more important. I remember the first time someone told me, um, you need to really work on deep breathing. And I thought <laughs> deep breathing is not going to fix the circumstance, right? Well, that was my mistake because it, it's not about fixing the circumstance. It's about self care in the midst of the circumstance. Amen. Right? And so that self-care portion is so important. And I find that most of my patients, most of, I have a lot of women patients are, we're so good at serving other people. Hmm. And we somehow have been misinformed that self-care is selfish. It is not. 
It is not self care. You don't even know me. Essential. You are speaking my language Am over I? here. Oh my gosh! How often do I teach this? Do I talk about this? Put your oxygen well, mask twins, on first, <laughs> <laughs> ladies. Because I'm telling you, there's a reason you put your oxygen mask on first when the ship's going down or the airplane's going down or whatever, right? I mean, you can't pour from an empty vessel. Okay. It doesn't happen. You can't do it. And you're worthy to take care of yourself. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So important. I know. So important. So yeah, so finding finding that sweet spot. And that's why I'm so glad to, you know, partner with Danny here and just and talk about these things because there's things that she does and she's so good at that I haven't been trained as a, as a traditional medical doctor. And there's things that I can do as a rheumatologist that she's not necessarily exactly trained right. in. And finding that, like you said, the sweet spot, the balance is, is super important. And I, I wish that some of her patients would trust the medications a little more. And I wish that some of my patients would trust the process a little more. Trust the process. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it's okay. We'll get them there. We'll get them there. We'll get them there. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. And but you know, I had this, I had this, uh, I'll tell a story that it was such a cool thing that happened. Um, I was leaving my work. Uh, I, I've been working downtown and um, I saw this little man that was coming out of an elevator and he was older and he was just kind of standing there and I was coming down. And it was the doctor's area where we park and I saw him and I said, hi, sir, you know, can I help you? And I'm a pretty chipper, upbeat type person anyway. And he said, yeah, I don't know where the ER is. And I said, oh, I'm so glad you asked me. It's just right across. It's just really, you just take this crosswalk. It's right there. And he's like, oh, thank you. And I turned and I start to walk to my car. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, man, he's so lucky he ran into me. I'm so friendly. And I told him right where that <laughs> ER was. I mean, I was feeling really good about myself. And I got in my car and I start to leave. And I see him and he is still standing oh. right just a few steps from where I saw him and oh. I thought, Oh dear, I should have helped him. And right when I thought that I saw this nurse walking across and she saw him and she talked to him and then she grabbed his arm oh. and walked across she with, went him. with him. And I thought, you know, sometimes you mentioned earlier, pill in a pamphlet, we direct people where to go, but sometimes people need us to link arms they do. and they walk go hand with them, in hand. That's right. right. And wow. that's what's so great about this group. That's so great about what we can do when we work together. We, yeah. we really need to just walk with people. You bet. You bet. I was in the breast center today at St. Thomas, and this lady came down, a nurse, some girl got lost, not couldn't find the breast center, but she walked her right down to it yeah. and dropped her off. She said, I couldn't find it. So she went, isn't that something? I know. Yeah. That's a good story. That's exactly how we need to do it, yeah, right? Absolutely. There's power in numbers. And there's power in community. And I'm a big believer people heal when they have community, whether it's one person or a whole group of people. That's Absolutely. why this group is a good, it's a good group. You've got yourself hooked up with a good community. Nice. And I'm telling you, they're like me, they're loud mouths when they believe in somebody. <laughs> and when they like somebody, they will refer patients. I mean, they will send people your way. So, yeah. so, okay. So anything else you know I was diagnosed with lupus when I was 35 years old and I went to see somebody I, I lived in Paducah I think I was 35 I don't know I was in my 30s I was in the middle of all kinds of stuff. like somewhere in my 30s my OBGYN found me the best rheumatologist there was at Vanderbilt right so I was all excited I was going to Vanderbilt because I'm from Gilbertsville Kentucky so I was real excited <laughs> I got in there I knew nothing about functional medicine and she looked at me and she said Danielle there is no cure for lupus. It will kill you. I mean, this is what the rheumatologist yeah. said to me straight up. And she goes, here's your pain medicine. Here's your anti-inflammatory. She said, but these will hurt your kidneys. And we need to check your kidneys anyway every six mm. months. And I was like, what? And so I was put on, I don't know what I was on, something, something that got pulled off the market, um, actually. <laughs> like, it did. What was off the market? Was it Viox. So, Viox. I was put on Viox, right? Okay. So, so I was like, well, I don't like her. And she was the best there was, right? That's what I was told. Now she's still around because I know because people come in and tell me. But so, and, and this, so, then I, so then I told my doctor, Dr. Clark, I said, find me a new one. And so she found me a new one. And I didn't know anything about diet or anything. So she found me a new one. And, I, and, and Dr. Gore, and I mean, this was 25 years ago nearly, right? So Dr. Gore is great. Yeah, he great. said the same thing. There's no cure, blah, blah, blah. But he said a lot nicer and certainly didn't tell me I was going to die or I could die, you know. And so yeah. I went to him for years, but I hadn't been there in a long time. But, you know, you got to be careful what you say to people. I 
remember sure. that 25 years later. Absolutely. Danielle, you know, there's no cure. You yeah. could, you're going to die. Or there's, you know, people die from this. I'm like, well, and there, there, there is no cure. Nothing I really take I care of has a cure. But we do have treatments. Yeah. But what I usually tell people, a lot of people know <laughs> di the disease diabetes, you know, and the, I'll say, listen, you know people that have diabetes. And there's some people who can just watch their diet and that's it. That's right. And then there's some people that no matter what they do, they go blind or lose a leg, right? I mean, that's the severe, you know, and there's everything in between. And it's the same thing with lupus and RA and fibromyalgia and Hashimoto's. I mean, there's people with Hashimoto's that just have positive antibodies and no major symptoms. That's right. They feel fine. They yeah. don't even know they have antibodies. Exactly. I tell them, oh my gosh, do you know your antibodies are like 800 and something? My what? Yeah. Like they don't even have any idea they have Hashimoto's. Right. Isn't that something? And then there's other people that really struggle, yeah, you know, absolutely. and, uh, you know, and everything in between. So, you know, there's, there's no one says fits all when it comes to our, our, our bodies and, you know, we can Google stuff and we can WebMD it and it's, it's helpful, but <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's not you, you know, you need that That's personalized, right. individualized care. You need yes. a doctor, you need a team, you need, you know, or a nurse practitioner. Absolutely. Yeah. Provider. No, provider. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I love doctors. I think doctors are fabulous. There's doctors in this house. I like doctors. But it drives me nuts on those pharmaceutical commercials where they say, ask your doctor. Well, you know what? There's a lot of nurse practitioners out there. It, it should right. say, ask your healthcare provider. That's right. Or PA. I mean, there's PA, healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry, that's a pet peeve. Because <laughs> uh, we're not all doctors. <laughs> no, you know, we're not all doctors. That's right. And, uh, right? And, and we know our place. We're nurse practitioners. That's right. She's the doctor. That's right. <laughs> Okay, we are having fun. Okay, so I'm thrilled. So do you have anything else to say? When are you opening? What's yeah. the address? Where are you? I've already put yeah. the phone number up here, guys. And if you have any questions, please put your, put your questions up yeah. there and we'll answer it. But um, tell us, yeah. what's the so, story? So I decided to open up my own solo rheumatology clinic, yes. which was sort of a, a dream that I never really <sighs> acted on. And then it sort of hit me that if I want to do it, this is the time. And uh, and I'm so excited to do it. And so uh, it's called Cuevas Center for Arthritis and Fibromyalgia. And uh, it's going to be at the 100 uh, Covey Drive. That's a building right in front of Williamson Medical Center, Suite 211. And uh, they're actually doing construction as we speak, putting in some new floors, new paint, all that good stuff. So it should be open on January 28th, as I'm hoping to be my first day to see patients. Uh, might be open a couple of days earlier than that, but we're shooting for January 28th. January 28th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm so excited. I mean, it's a huge deal. Yeah. So when I was stepping out of the boat of my office four, four and a half years ago or so, I was thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm a single mom. What if this doesn't work? Holy cow, I owe 196000 Well, at that point, I owed like 175000 in student loans. Um, I mean, it was just a big ordeal. And I, But I thought, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, I have to go work at a minute clinic. Well, what the heck? I can go work at a minute clinic. That's way easier than doing what I do for a living. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. you're right. It's runny yeah. nose that they have zero scope, hardly there, uh -huh. but they can do. That's the worst case scenario. That's what I kept thinking. It's the worst case. Yeah. Well, guess what? I don't have to go work in a minute clinic. Amen. Right? Amen to that. So mm -hmm. you are not going to have to go yeah. back to, you're not well, going to have to go to a minute clinic. Uh, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <'Cause>, it's going <laughs> to be. Uh, oh, they would not like you because you'd be saying, well, what about your diet? What about, uh, you know, right? Um, I no, no it's going to be You can fantastic. ask my daughter, if, if somebody comes to a minute clinic with like sniffles, I'll be like, drink a big glass of water and take a hot bath. That's usually my uh, my, my thing for everything. That's exactly so, right. No, but um, but really, uh, I'm, I'm super excited about it. The, the sort of mission behind my new office, the reason I did it the way I did it, it's really a micro practice. It's me and I have one assistant. And um, for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I thought too. Well, no, I had one girl. I almost gave her a nervous breakdown. She almost died. Uh, <laughs> don't say that. What if my sister? No, no. Because <laughs> the phone kept ringing, which is a great thing. No, but the the reason is I want to have that one on one. You know what I realized after years and years and years of doing this, the more patients you see, the less time you have to interact with them. And I realized that, gosh, I can learn a lot about a patient if I take their blood pressure myself. And I can take, take, learn a lot about a patient when I call them and tell them about their labs instead of just they getting a message. You're a little anemic. Call your PCP. You know, so mm -hmm. so the sort of the design is to have more access. Uh, I'm my yes. thing I'm excited about the most is I've got a HIPAA compliant texting app. So my yeah. patients can actually text me. 
And that's been great. I've had that for about a month now. And, and even though my new practice didn't open yet, my, my current patients are using it. They love it. And it's great. It's, it's really great. They can text me their labs. They can text me pictures of a rash. They can uh, just text me their concerns or even just like, hey, is it normal that XYZ is happening? You know, so that's pretty exciting. That is exciting. Yeah, is. yeah we discussed that app. So that's, yeah, that's great. Well, I'm excited. We're going to ask questions here. All We're right. going to, you guys who aren't here, sorry, you're going to have to ask your questions <laughs> online, but uh, you've got her phone number. I'll put her address up there. 100 uh, Covey Drive Suite. Did you say 208? 211. 211. 211. Uh-oh, 208 is probably, you know, who knows? If somebody Proctology did. or something yeah, don't like go that. There. We don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, you guys have a great night. Sunday night, 7 p.m., at Danny Williamson Wellness is part two of the elect the dangers of electromagnetic fields. Did you watch that first one? Have yes, you seen yes, it? Yes, and and we uh, have been talking about it at home. I'm I'm very nervous about all of guys. That. You guys need <laughs> to bring your notebooks. My bad habit. Listen, I was in. Okay, so we're not logging off yet because I have a lot of words. Um, I wasn't voted most talkative for nothing in high school my senior year. Listen, I was in Whole Foods on Tuesday. This lady walked up to me. She goes, "You changed our entire family Sunday night," and I was like. What? And she goes, you changed our family's life Sunday night. And I said, I did. And she said, yeah. She said, you mentioned <clears throat> briefly, does your arm tingle when you use your phone or your face tingle when you use your phone? She said, I have had that for years. She said, I told my husband, I said, oh my gosh. Well, anyway, long story. They went to the AT&T store. Mm -hmm. She goes, we all have new phones. And she said, they're, they're not smart phones. I didn't know you could even get a phone that's not a smartphone anymore. <laughs> well, you got an old flip phone, Roger. So, I mean, show, <laughs> show them your phone, what you have. One of those, you've got to go through the numbers. You know, remember when you used to have to say hello? Yeah. All I could say was hi, <laughs> bye. Um, okay. So she said, we got all got new phones. <laughs> and, and, oh, oh yeah. We got a, how old is she? 13? 14. 14 year old in here is no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, um, she said the guy at the AT&T store said, oh, yeah, we know all about the dangers of electromagnetic fields and what they're causing, to, you know, how the, the brain cancers and all that. She said, I was horrified. She said, we've ordered a meter and we're going through our house. She said, I've moved my bed. I mean, she's in the middle of the pasta aisle at Whole Foods. She's <laughs> telling me this whole thing. And I thought, man, wow, I don't even know her. And yeah, it was really That's cool. Really so part two is Sunday night and we have Vicki Warren, the, the electrical engineer who speaks at our Hashimoto's meeting, is actually coming to my house with all of her meters and gadgets and stuff. And we're gonna do this live part two. She's gonna talk about making your bedroom and your home a sanctuary because we can't get away from this stuff every day, right? You've got the lights and the computers, you have all these things that you're bombarded with electromagnetic wise daily, but your home, your bedroom for sure needs to be a sanctuary. So Sunday night, seven o'clock central time is going to be mind blowing. I'm scared because I'm going to have her do, if we can figure out how to do it, we're going to have her do my bedroom live and see how toxic I am in there. <laughs> you know, there's no telling. I'm probably one big hot bed, literally. I mean, of a mess. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like me doing my, um, thyroid ultrasound live that when I did it and I had a nodule and I was like, no, cut, <laughs> cut, I don't have a nodule. <laughs> so, all right, guys, have a good night. We'll see you later. All right, have a good one. We'll see you Sunday evening.